This Kate Crane stuff is unbelievably wild. She was one star bombing her fellow peers, including those had given her a blurb for her book. Now we finally have a confession from Kate. Starting this sincere apology off without an actual apology. Kate Crane, who one star review bombed her debut peers, specifically BIPOC authors, has now just been dropped by her publisher, by Illumicrate, and by her literary agent. She's saying, I was not myself. I wouldn't have done this when I was of sound mind. Mental health medication does not make anyone racist, nor does it give you the power to time travel back to April. Hello, hello, hi, my name is Swoop, and welcome to the sus pool, the place where everything and everyone is sus, maybe even us. Come on in, the water's fine. Wow. Wow, it is a new year. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome. So I hope that your year is off to a good start. You have some good goals set for yourself. We have some amazing things coming to this channel. I am so excited. We're going to be getting into all of the creepy, dark, weird, mind bending, spooky shit it very soon. <laughs> but yes, the sus pull. This is my second channel where instead of doing feature length documentary deep dives the way I do on my main channel here, we dip our toes in the sus pool in real time and dive into current headlines and creepy, bizarre, mind bending stories that either keep me up at night or just make me tilt my head and think, what the f so if you want to get weird, <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and let's take a dip in the sus pool. So let me ask you something real quick. Whether you've been following either of my channels or just following the news or even internet scandals, what's the fastest download you've ever seen in real time? Some of y'all might be like, well, swoop, obviously it's the downfall of Illuminati, where over the course of two months, she's tried to start like petty drama with Legal Eagle, but instead lost over 400,000 subscribers and and tanked maybe her entire reputation. It's looking a little cold out there. Now, I would argue that based on the timeline of her downfall though, that was more of a slow burn that took years of receipts piling up from like all of the, you know, the staff and whatnot uh, for them to all come pouring out. So how about someone like Creepshow Art? Shannon's story is one that many people tell me feels like she rose, then she fell in the blink of an eye, but Shannon had been on YouTube since 2016 and her her painful downfall was another one that was months, even years in the making. I mean, just ask Emily Artful and the hell that she endured. If you're not familiar, I have a full interview with Emily actually on my main channel. It's one of my favorite interviews that I've done. If you wanna check that out, I'll try to remember to link it below here. But I'm here today to say that there is a complete fuster cluss of a downfall that is so dramatic and happened so quickly that the person behind it never even got to a release a single piece of their product before they became persona non grata. I am speaking, of course, about the recent infamous Goodreads review bombing scandal of 2023. Like it literally just happened like a couple of weeks ago. This story is so supremely messed up, okay? Like a bitch about to do the belly flop in the sus pool. But first, a huge thank you to today's sponsor, the Paired app. Now, I don't know who came up with this, but they need to be given awards because the Paired app might be one of the most genius and fun apps I have ever used. Paired is a relationship care app that you can use to deepen your connection and relationship with your partner with daily couples questions, relationship games, quizzes, and so much more. So like y'all know those fun relationship games where someone asks a question and the couple answers on cards and they like reveal their answers to each other and see if they match. It's kind of like that, but so much cooler. Paired app gives prompts that create meaningful conversation about things that I like normally wouldn't have thought to discuss. But one thing that I really love is that you can't see each other's answers until you both complete the quizzes or games. And once you do, it really opens up fun and interesting conversations with your partner. The interactive games are so much fun. They really help improve communication and intimacy. And it has this really cool timeline tracker where you can input special dates and memories through the course of your relationship, which I think is really lovely. And what's great about the Paired app is that it works for every kind of relationship, whether you just met and are getting to know each other or you've been together for years. And with Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day just around the corner, I personally think better than the typical, you know, kind of over hyped pressure to buy something expensive, give the gift of a subscription to Paired for yourself and your partner. So treat yourself to a healthier, more engaging relationship. Click my link below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off Paired Premium so you can maintain and deepen your connection with your partner because you deserve it, honey. Okay, let's dive in.
Have y'all heard of it? It was all over TikTok at the end of the year. So again, just a couple of weeks ago, this was the story of an author that was on top of the world. They signed a two book deal with Penguin Random House with their debut novel set to release early 2024 this year. But after a scandal in which they created numerous sock accounts to review bomb a number of other authors, almost exclusively BIPOC authors, black indigenous people of color. Yeah, that BIPOC, they were suddenly dropped by by their agent, their publisher, their international publisher, and completely disgraced overnight in the literary world, okay? So slip on your glasses, we are getting smart over here. Now, if you're on the book side of TikTok, creatively known as Book Talk, you probably heard about this. And shockingly, you've probably seen this talked about in the New York Times, Time Magazine, Gizmodo, and way, way, way more. But if you don't know about this story, let's just, let's just back up to the early days of December 2023. I know it was so long ago, but listen, okay. So pretend Thanksgiving just happened and you're still being constantly bitch slapped in the face by candy canes and sales in every store. You know what I'm talking about. And a distant sighting of a creepy mall Santa whose red suit smells like ass and he wants small children to sit on his lap in exchange for milk and cookies, okay? There's nothing sus about that. They don't belong in the sus pool, no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> The holidays. <sighs> So this story started where all good stories usually go to die <laughs> on goodreads.com. Now, for those of you who don't know what Goodreads is, the uh, like the easiest way to explain it is that it's like letterboxed, but for books. And if you don't know what letterboxed is, th then it's like Goodreads, but for movies. <laughs> Yeah, that's the best I got. It's like social media for books. Okay, see, that wasn't too hard swoop now, was it? You could have just come up with the, yeah, okay, anyways. So you can actually search Goodreads for books or quotes or like reviews and also leave your own reviews and curate your own profile and like get, you know, like book suggestions and like post blogs and I don't know why I'm so handsy, but you know, you could do all of that good stuff. So Goodreads is a massively influential tool in the modern literary world. And I like that word, literary literary and can literally <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, literally make or break many up and coming authors' careers and even well established ones. One time, The Guardian reported that in June 2023, Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote what I like to call the WLWLL, AKA the white ladies who love lattes classic, Eat, Pray, Love, had to cancel the book that was less than a year away after it received hundreds of negative reviews on Goodreads because it was a book set in Russia being released released during the invasion of Ukraine. And if you have to cancel a book after you wrote the definitive beige Bible, that should be a testament to the power of perception on Goodreads. So yeah, Goodreads, December, 2023. Something really unusual is happening. Around nine or so created accounts began leaving a number of one-star reviews on books across the platform. Now this in and of itself isn't the weird part. You know, people suck, people are haters and it is what it is, right? But each new detail I add here makes it a little stranger. So just stay with me. Number one, none of these books that were being reviewed were actually out yet meaning that a number of reviews were being made trashing a book that realistically nobody could have read yet. And number two, almost every single book being trashed was written by a person of color who was set to release their first book ever. I'm just like, can you, can you imagine it is your first book ever okay you like you spent all of this time you poured yourself into it maybe I don't know it took a year maybe it took several years and you're super stoked you've been working on this a long ass time and bam bad reviews before you even hit publish on the damn thing not on Beyonce's internet okay I refuse so there was Francis White's book Voyage of the Damned Camilla Cole's book So Let Them Burn Molly X Chang's To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods K.M. Einwright's Mistress of Lies Taya Guanzon recently released The Hurricane Wars, also R.M. Virtues, uh, one of the only established authors here who had multiple books trashed, and Bethany Baptiste's The Poisons We Drink. Considering the 
So like all of these authors went through, I thought it was worthwhile to give each of them a shout out in case anybody here wants to read a fantasy novel written by a person of color. So 10 out of 10 would recommend, especially since each of them may not have gotten a chance at their careers after being suddenly slammed with countless one-star reviews prior to their release. But people who noticed the sudden influx of review bombing on unreleased books did a little digging and found nine accounts from as far back or short back as April 2023 doing this, with one review on Molly X. Chang's book stating, quote, I can't believe Del Rey spent half a million dollars on this when they could have spent half a million dollars on anything else. Sorry, not sorry. Almost every single review on the accounts, negative as hell. Like what a just like dreadful piss at. But notice I said almost, because the reason this all started to look very, very suspicious to people is that each Goodreads account without fail also left at least one five-star review on another book one single book, <laughs> the same book, one that also had not been released yet. So bad reviews happening over here, five stars over here on this one book, ain't none of them hoes been released yet. What the f is going on? Well, that unreleased book that was getting all them five stars was a book by the title of Crown of Starlight, written by a debut author and today's suspool nominee, Kate Corrine. Katie, Katie, Katie Cat, come on down and bring a swimsuit. You're gonna need it, girl. Now, not much is publicly known about Kate Corrine that I can talk about at the moment without running the risk of doxing her, but what you need to know for this story is that Kate Corrine is a bit of a Jill of all trades, like an artist, a web designer, a costume designer, a huge Star Wars fan, and of course, an aspiring author. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> She's also white, which I normally wouldn't feel the need to mention somebody's color, but trust me, it, it, we're in the cesspool now, okay? It, it, it's gonna matter to the story. Back in June of 2023, 30-year-old Kate did something that every aspiring author craves in this world. She struck a book deal. And not just any book deal. She signed a two-book deal with Del Rey Books, an imprint of the Penguin Random House, one of the titans of the literary world. I think I, did I spit when I said literary? I don't know, but here we are. As well as the book distributor, Daphne Press. And with that deal came an announcement of her big, you know, I have arrived party into the literary world, Crown of Sunlight, a book she described as, quote, a snarky, sexy, slow burn space opera romp. But at its core, this is a story about love, sacrifice, essual agency, embracing your identity as a form of rebellion against oppression, and the difficult choices we all make between facing our fears or losing the chance to become who we're meant to be. Sounds heavy. In the press release for her signing, she described the book as, quote, a reimagining of the Greek myth of Ariadne and Dionysus set against a galaxy full of spaceships and glittering technology, magic, and monsters, and the Olympian gods who rule them all from within the heart of a fiery star. Now, honestly, it doesn't really sound like something that I would be into, but uh, with some of this artwork and the way it's been described, I could see this becoming something that pops up on Pinterest boards all over. I'm just kidding. Like I just, you know, I have my taste in books and other people have other tastes. But one thing, it doesn't really seem like a book that really needs a leg up in the way that Kate would eventually lift said leg like a dog pissing all over their shit, but I'll get to that. So here's the thing, a number of accounts review bombing other authors while coincidentally praising only one author's unreleased book and she's a white author, but the other authors are almost exclusively people of color. This was a very, very, very bad look. Kate, Katie, Cat, what do you, they're bad, bad kitty, bad kitty. and everybody looking into this new right away who did it. But instead of calling Katie out, they tried to handle it privately. Sh shocking. Maybe authors are less messy than other types of people who don't handle 
privately. Now, the author Jiron J. Zhao actually subtweeted Kate, in my opinion, as a warning shot on December 5th, stating, quote, if you as a debut author are going to make a bunch of fake Goodread accounts, one star bombing fellow debuts you're threatened by, can you at least not make it so obvious by upvoting your own book on a bajillion different lists with those same accounts? Okay, listen, you know, you know I love a petty subtweet, but that actually isn't petty, but it, you know, it's facts, bitch, it's facts! It's facts! It's facts! It's in our facts, these sites is in our facts. It's in our facts. So this tweet went crazy viral as it opened up a new mystery for internet sleuths to suss out and sus as in S-U-S-S -S with two S's, not like sus with one for suspicious or susful. Okay, got it. The petty tweet. So who could Shiran have been talking about? Who would do such a thing? Very quickly, the mystery of the Goodreads review bombing became the chatter on book talk and in group chats everywhere. And very, very quickly, one of the authors affected figured out out exactly who did it. Bethany Baptiste, author of The Poisons We Drink, who posted a timeline of how she figured this shit out. As she puts it, she quote tweeted Chiron's thread, alluding to the idea that she was one of the authors affected and instantly began receiving messages from other potentially affected authors. And Bethany had figured out pretty quickly that this was Kate. I mean, Pete Davidson thought it was Kate. My Uber driver thought it was Kate. Everybody thought it was Kate. Come on, hell on, it's Kate. I mean, I don't actually know if Pete Davidson has a clue about this story. I just like saying his name. I don't know why, but my Uber driver was onto this. Sh Okay, about to send Kate to the streets. But Bethany didn't want to drop the bomb yet, so she also subtweeted Kate on and on with one of the most infamous yet ultimately important tweets being made at 6.53 a.m. on December 6th, and I'm giving you the exact minutes because I am a thorough bitch. Now, this time is important. I'm not just being a thorough bitch. I promise it is important. That tweet said, quote, strangers want to know so y'all don't support that author while simultaneously not supporting supporting the debuts affected anyway. That's why nobody's saying anything right now. This is hot tea for y'all. Meanwhile, debuts have to deal with an A snake in the hen house. Let us process this. Now, this is a very bizarre tweet without context, but the true context is that Kate had actually been called out in a private Slack group containing a number of debut authors, but she firmly denied that it was her. She said, quote, and I feel like I just, let's give this a dramatic reading. I did not review bomb anyone. I did not positively review my own book with false accounts. And then went on to claim that the real review bomber was her friend, Lily. <laughs> my yard wait, wait, wait. all of you daddy chill what the hell is even that lily as sorry i'm laughing because i know what's coming lily as kate described was a friend kate had made in Raylo writing circles. Now, this is where the story gets a lot weirder. Now, if you didn't know, like me, Raylo is slang for people who ship the idea of Rey and Kylo Ren from the latest Star Wars movies being in a relationship together. I don't even know if I'm saying those names right. Me and Star Wars, we like, we don't, we don't know each other. And by the way that Kate described it, she was a Raylo stan. Lily was a Raylo stan. And as Kate's good friend, Lily randomly decided decided to take it upon herself to prop up Kate, little Katie cat, and sh on BIPOC writers. <laughs> what a good friend! As proof of this, Kate offered up an extensive amount of screenshots of the two speaking on Discord. I honestly don't need to read these, just like nobody needs to read Kate's book. But the gist of the alleged conversation is that Lily claims to have revealed that she review bombed these authors to help Kate without realizing it was not only against the rules, but was incredibly sketchy. So there you have it. A deranged friend of Kate's who loves Star Wars did it, dunk them both in the cesspool. Case closed, right? Well. It would be, but the authors affected were suspicious for a number of reasons. First, a number of actual Raylo stands on Reddit have alleged that Kate was indeed a huge part of the Raylo fanfic community a while ago, but none of them have ever heard of Lily, okay? Don't come for the Raylos, they gonna get you. Second, a number of disparities in Kate's screenshots were noticed that brought the whole story into question, such as the timeline being skewed mid-screenshot. 
Ah, bitch! Ah! Whew, I had to squeeze that out of my last breath there. Notice here where the time jumps between today at 8.10 p.m. to yesterday at 8.10 p.m. and then back to today at 8.11 p.m. <laughs> I just, if you're gonna grift, like at least understand Photoshop, I'm sorry. So something was, you know, little stinky little fish here. And the third and final red flag was that nobody could even find this Lily character by her screen name on Discord or anywhere else. So finally, the authors asked to speak with Kate, who was super dodgy and did not connect Lily with anyone. Hmm, wouldn't you think? Like if your whole, your career's like on the line here and you say this Lily person kind of you over like you're probably gonna like say oh, well here she is deal you <laughs> now many of the authors began ripping excuse me ripping into Kate who decided to say that her agent has advised her to stop speaking about this while Bethany was ripping into Kate one of Kate's real friends decided to enter the chat I wonder if they regret that an author and person with albinism by the name of Meredith Mooring who at 1 11 p.m decided to subtweet Bethany saying remember back when Bethany had tweeted there's an a snake I don't want to use that word not in reference to a person do not use that word in reference to a person please just want to make sure that I make that distinction but they subtweeted Bethany saying it's quote it's really disappointing that other authors immediately stooped to making fun of my albinism in call out posts Having albinism is a disability. We're gonna get into that real quick. As Bethany puts it, this was the last straw for a situation for a few reasons. First of all, according to Bethany, her tweet wasn't about Meredith, somebody she didn't even know was a person with albinism. Second of all, Bethany herself has a disability. And although people, yes, with disabilities can be ableist, this wasn't intended as that according to Bethany. Now, an A snake in a hen house is a wild phrase. I would never use it, but allegedly, according to Bethany and Shiran J. Shao, it's black Southern slang for an untrustworthy, deceptive white person. Now, to be fair, if you Google this phrase, only this story comes up. So I can understand someone reading all of this and calling bullshit on the definition, but to be painfully fair, before we jump to conclusions, we gotta ask questions, right? Like what reason would Bethany have to lie about a reference to a white snake that she seems to have been making regarding a white author who was review bombing the reviews of people of color. Now. That seems like a likely scenario, but I'm not making assumptions here. So I'll leave it up to y'all. Do I think that it was an acceptable phrase about a snake? Like, I don't really think that phrase should have been used. I think there's a bazillion other things that could be said uh, about this story than making reference to, I. But the third and final reason this changed everything was that when Bethany and her group chat of debut authors discovered that this was one of Kate's close friends trying to attack the credibility of somebody speaking out against a review bomber, that meant this was war to them, especially for Sharon, who that afternoon decided to drop a couple bombs detailing who the review bomber was, providing a 31 page Google doc and a six minute TikTok exposing Kate Crane for all she was worth and bitch, I, 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 her book ain't worth after this. The gist is that a white author debuting in 2024 has been caught using fake Goodreads accounts to one star bomb other debuts who are mostly POC. There are 31 pages of receipts in a Google Doc, which you can find on my Twitter at Xianjie Zhao. But they go way back to April of this year. I had known about this for a while, but I held my tongue because the victims wanted me to. They wanted to try and resolve it privately at first and this did not work out. Especially when the morning after Kate was finally alerted that people were catching on to these accounts, they went on Twitter to paint themselves as one of the to further promote their book. Straw that broke me. After that, a friend of Kate who happens to have albinism accused one of the victims, a black disabled woman, of deliberately targeting her with the saying, a no snake in a hen house, in a tweet she made venting about the situation. Except this tweet was posted three hours before anybody knew that this person was Kate's best friend. Now, I'm not in a position to debate whether this was ableist because it's a popular black southern saying. But this was clearly just an accusation to deflect from the main scandal. And I snapped and tweeted out the 31 pages of evidence. It was like I dropped a nuke on book Twitter. It blew up. 
screenshots of Kate's conversation with her friend were also publicized. And that's when the Raylos entered the courtroom and took to the witness stand. They were like, we have cross-referenced our group chats and we do not know of any Lily among us. What's worse is that the two biggest Raylo writers who became actual published authors, Ali Hazelwood and Taya Guanzong, were among the books that got bombed. Taya especially have been friends with Kate for years. They've met in real life. Taya gave Kate's book a really heartfelt endorsement. And Kate proceeded to rate Taya's book, The Hurricane Wars, two stars with all the fake accounts. Now, it can't be stressed enough just how explosive this entire expose on Kate was. Like, you may have seen headlines referring to it in The New York Times. Times, for instance, because a few days later on December 11th, Kate's literary agent, Rebecca Potos, announced on Twitter that they were cutting ties with Kate. Then Penguin Random House canceled her book and cut her loose, and so did Delray Books, and so did Daphne Press in the UK. Not even six months after she literally inked and signed her deal, and around six months before her book was even set to release. And so just one day, later, Kate came clean, tweeting a massive notes app apology. We love those. She begins by stating that she was suffering from addiction, alcoholism, and mental health issues, and admits to creating eight Goodreads accounts during what she calls a, quote, complete psychological breakdown to boost her own books ratings and review bomb debuts. Let's give this a little reedy-poo. Quote, during this time, I created roughly six profiles on Goodreads, and along with two profiles I made during a similar but shorter breakdown in 20. She's done this before, a previous year ago, and she's using the same excuse. Let me keep reading. I boosted the rating of my book, bombed the ratings of several fellow debut authors and left reviews that ranged from kind of mean to downright abusive. Two of these authors, Molly X. Chang and Danielle Jensen, are fellow Delray authors. Camilla Cole and Bethany Baptiste just happened to be on the wrong Goodreads list at the wrong time. No, you were on the wrong list at the wrong time. Don't blame me, they, it's not. I felt no ill will towards any of that. Really? Really? It was just my fear about how my book would be received running out of control. My memories of this are extremely fuzzy. Oh my gosh, that is convenient. So it's possible that there are a couple other authors. If so, please know I take full ownership of what I did to you as well. I'm sorrier than you'll ever know. There's nothing I can say to erase what I did to you when I was slapped on the wrist by Goodreads and vague tweeted by a handful of people. I panicked that my secret was about to get out. And rather than taking responsibility for my actions, I tried to cover my track. Yeah, you invented an entire human being named Lily who doesn't exist. Still, what do I know? Still in the middle of this breakdown, I made up the world's sloppiest chat with a non-existent friend who was supposedly to blame and sent fake apologies for the actions of said friend, which only made things worse. Yeah, imagine that. I betrayed the confidence of my agent, my pub team, my readers, and my friends and betrayed my own deeply held values. I guess they weren't that deeply held. Sorry, my pettiness. I also dragged one of my dearest friends, wow, and fellow debut authors into the mud with me when she came to my defense. I'll leave her name out of this so as not to pull her in even deeper. However, if she wishes to come forward, I'll apologize to her publicly as well. Let me be extremely clear. Oh my gosh, this is exhaustingly long. Let me be extremely clear. While I might not have been sober or of sound mind during this time, blame it. Blame it on the alcohol. Sorry, my, my yeah. <laughs> I accept responsibility for the pain and suffering I caused and my delay in posting this is due to spending the last few days offline while going through withdrawal as I sobered up enough to be brutally honest with you and myself. I know some of you won't forgive me and I recognize that you're not required to. No one ever wants to be judged by their worst actions, but that's not always up to us. That's a decent enough line there that I don't hear enough from people. I'll be reaching out to everyone directly impacted, though that may take time since I'm checking into an intensive psychiatric care and rehab facility, which means I'll be mostly off social media as I need to give 100% to the program if I want it to stick. All I can do going forward is to try to live my life in a way that shows you these aren't empty words. Yours with so much love and the utmost heartbreak, Kate Corain. Wow, so many words strung together in several sentences and paragraph form to 
give that. What do y'all think of that? There's actually a couple of things in there that I'm like, okay, that is a, a good way to say it, to approach things. And, and just like, there is an apology there, which, you know, we a lot of notepad apologies don't even have an apology. I'll, I'll start with a couple of the positives here. I do appreciate that I didn't see anywhere I'm learning from my mistakes or I made mistakes. You know how people always like just use these words, my mistakes, I made a mistake. Well, it's like, no, you didn't. These were intentional actions. When people use mistakes, they, they say that all the time about things that were like very direct. They were shady boots about it. They were doing it behind the scenes. They didn't want anyone to know. They were lying to cover their tracks. So it's not a mistake. A mistake is like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me apologize and backtrack. That's a mistake. This is intentional. This was very intentional on Kate's part. So I'm glad that she didn't put in the word mistake there. I was expecting to see that. But also blaming things on alcohol or breakdowns. Listen, there's always gonna be a part of me that tries my best in scenarios like this when we're analyzing stuff to reserve some space for the knowledge that if someone is having a mental health situation, things can get messy because that is true. Things can get messy with some people. It's really asking a lot to be like, oh, so you drank and you intentionally target a whole bunch of people's careers with the intention of ruining their careers so that you could boost your own. That sounds very calculated to me. It doesn't sound like drinking made you messy and you just like oops and fell on your keyboard and like happened to type a bunch of things and review people's stuff. This is like very calculated, very intentional and you hit it. And then when you got caught, you lied about it. And then you invented someone else and you did all, so I kind of draw the line there. I don't know, man, doing shit like this to other people and then using that as an excuse, I don't think it's an excuse. It can be something that absolutely was happening. Mental health crises, situations obviously happen with people. I'm someone who's been through that, but it doesn't give you the right to be like a total conniving asshole. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Can I say it? Cause I'm saying it. So. Yeah, I've got opinions about this, but nobody can put it better than Bethany Baptiste, whose quote tweet of this apology eloquently states, and I quote, I have PTSD, depression, and anxiety. I understand the wrong meds or dose can make your mind feel like it's snapping in half. Meds don't make you racist. Racism is in you. You hit it by lurking and plotting. We'll just leave it there. I don't doubt any of the claims that Kate has made about her mental health and general anxiety about her book releasing. I'm sure that is a very stressful time. I also don't think a concentrated effort to attack authors of color for half a year can be blamed on mental health. Most of the other authors affected have stayed silent on this, but my favorite tweet has been from RM Virtues who tweeted, quote, I'm gonna be so completely honest right now. Personally, for me, the apology was worse than the reviews. <laughs> true, true. Now, former agent Becca Potos tweeted that she was still processing the apology and didn't really know what to say, but quote, what I do know is that mental illness neither explains nor excuses racism and the debut authors, primarily BIPOC authors, deserve every ounce of support available right now in the publishing community. In the meantime, Kate has taken down her website. <laughs> Barnes and Noble has deleted her book's pre-order page. Bitch, you know you done up with Barnes and Nobles is deleting your online presence, okay? They be publishing all kinds of sh Now, reviews have been deleted across the internet for the pre-lease copies, and now whenever you Google the name Kate Corain, all you'll find is information about this controversy. I think that's called consequences for your actions. <laughs> Let Kate Korean serve as a bit of a lesson on a few things. Number one, don't be a shady jackass. <laughs> also, I don't know, don't be racist. Like, come on, like, just, just don't do it. The other lesson is that when you're handed the keys to the kingdom, don't throw those keys into the ocean and then wonder if mother nature is going to bring the tides back. She is a stingy bitch. Most of the time, self-sabotage can be avoided by doing one simple thing, sitting down, and minding your business. And Kate, oh Kate, Kate can have all the seats at her local library, surrounded by books, written by authors who weren't acting like giant steaming piles of shit. To put it simply, Kate Corain could have been a superstar, maybe 
I mean, realistically, she may have just been like one of the thousands upon millions of other aspiring artists out there who get their foot in the door. And like, hey, like at least the foot's in the door. That is more than most people ever get. But instead she just stubbed her toe and by proxy her entire career by committing to a con so absolutely easy to identify that it ensured ironically that nobody will ever forget the name Kate Corain, who is now officially part of the sus pool. Congratulations, Kate. Well deserved. Okay, everyone, grab a towel and dry off. That's what I got. I have a brand new full deep dive swoop documentary out on my main channel, Swoop. It is linked below. Make sure you check it out and subscribe to my main channel. Thanks for coming for a swim. Make sure to subscribe to this new channel here and turn on the bell for notifications. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am also working on weekly uploads to have on this channel soon. And we're gonna get into the spooky, mind bending, creepy stuff. Be sure to click my link below to get a seven day free trial and 25% off paired premium so you can maintain and deepen your connection with your partner and treat yourself to the healthy relationship that you deserve, honey. That's all for now, friends, and I will see you next time in the sus pool. Swoop!